Good evening. I just wanted to share some news in Israel that's happening. I thought you'd find this update rather interesting. I know you remember just about October 15th, 2020, that there was this report out where Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with Messiah. And this was in israeltoday.co.il. And I know you heard this story already, but there's an update to what has happened. Um, let me just refresh your memory about this. It says, Rabbi Yaakov Zizholtz told religious broadcaster Radio 2000 that Rabbi Kayam Konevsky recently told him that he, Konevsky, is already in direct contact with the Messiah. To understand why religious Jews are taking this seriously, it's important to know that Rabbi Kayam Konevsky is considered one of the two or three top rabbis of the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community in Israel. And Rabbi Zizholt says that Konevsky and others of the mystical concealed rabbis have now tasked him with informing the public of the Messiah's imminent arrival. Now this is what they recorded back then. Rabbi Zizholtz began his explosive three-hour interview with a warning. The process of redemption is about to start happening very quickly and at a fast pace. It is important that people remain calm and steady to act properly in the right time. There is a potential Messiah in every generation and there are righteous men who know precisely who it is. This is, of course, true in this generation. Now, I guess they're talking about men like Moses that were, you know, and Joseph that were types and shadows of a Messiah figure. Getting the word out now that the Messiah is closer than ever is a matter of life and death. Haven't you heard of Gog and Magog? That is what is going to happen very soon. Now, this was in 2020. Right now, the situation is explosive more than you can possibly imagine. Everyone needs to know whether they are on the inside or if they are going to be left out. Or you mean left behind? <laughs> he went on to reiterate a number of signs of which prominent rabbis have taken note and that they firmly believe to be evidence of the coming of Messiah. Now, of course, I wish I didn't have to go into that every time, but we know that they don't accept or believe Jesus, but there's a lot of Jewish people that do and a lot of rabbis that do, and some of them are hiding the fact that they do. But, of course, other ones are going to be deceived into believing it's somebody else other than Jesus. So, we already know this. Rabbi Dove Cook, as everyone knows, is a very righteous man. He's one of the greatest men of our generation, and 10 years ago, when Israel was suffering from a horrible drought, someone asked Rabbi Cook when the Sea of Galilee will again be full. Recounted Rabbi Zizholtz, Rabbi Cook responded that when the Messiah arrives, the Sea of Galilee will be full. In a few weeks, the Sea of Galilee will be full for the first time since Rabbi Cook made this statement. According to the Daily Star, the 90-year-old predicted the world on the cusp of entering the Messianic Age. It is predicted to mean the end of the world as we know it, ushering in the kingdom of God. The rabbi believes that the current age of hatred for those who learn the Bible fits with prophecy about the Messiah, adding that the signs of redemption are starting to appear, comparing the current age to the sunrise. Rabbi Konevsky went on to add, this generation displays absolute hatred for those who who learn the Bible, especially in recent years, we are seeing all of the conditions described in their book, the Talmud, which I'm not going to get into that, appear before us. It is for the reason that we anticipate the appearance of the Messiah at any moment, God willing. And of course, Rabbi Hillel Weiss said that he believes that the decision that Trump made back then over the embassy is the first stage of bringing about the end of days. And there is a third rabbi, Pincus Winston, who claimed ongoing tensions between Iran and Israel is building to the Messiah. And he said that 
This is a biblically-based prophetic crisis. Prophets from Christianity also claimed the end times could be imminent because of an apocalyptic blood moon that happened that July 27th. So this is the update that I wanted to get to. This was posted today, and it's March 18th, 2022, from the Times of Israel.com. That Rabbi Chaim Kanivsky, one of Israel's leading religious authorities, dies at age 94. Kanivsky was a hugely influential leader of the non Hasidic Lithuanian Haredi community with hundreds of thousands of followers. Politicians laud one of the generation's greats. Rabbi Chaim Kanivsky, one of Israel's most prominent ultra Orthodox rabbis, the one who said he was in meetings with the Messiah, died Friday at the age of 94. Medics were called to Kanivsky's home in Benai Brak after he collapsed and attempted to resuscitate him unsuccessfully. His funeral will take place on Sunday, according to Channel 12 News. Police expect it to be the largest funeral event in the country's history, and hundreds of thousands, perhaps near one million, are expected to attend, causing severe traffic disruption throughout the country's center. Foreign Minister Yair Lapid called Knivsky an important and meaningful leader in the lives of many Jewish people and offered condolences to them and to his family. Defense Minister Benny Gantz added, Beyond his greatness, when it came to religious law, Rabbi Knivsky was a man with deep life wisdom. He cared for the Torah and he cared for humankind. Opposition leader Benjamin Netanyahu said that the people of Israel lost a tremendous wise scholar who was a central link in the chain of passing down the Torah from generation to generation. Konevsky was born January 8, 1928, in Pinsk, the Second Polish Republic. His father was Yakov Yisrael Konevsky, known as the Stipler Gaon, a renowned Torah scholar and spiritual leader, and his mother, Miriam Karolitz, was the sister of Rabbi Avraham Yeshayahu Karolitz, known as the Shazvan Ish, a landmark figure in the ultra-Orthodox world of the 20th century. Knivsky arrived in then British Mandatory Palestine in 1954 when his father brought the family to live in the city of Benai Brak. He married Batsheva Elyashiv, the daughter of Rabbi Yosef Solomon Elyashiv, another prominent ultra-Orthodox rabbi who lived in Jerusalem until his death in 2012. His decades of study in yeshivas were marked by tutoring from some of the biggest names in the Israeli ultra-Orthodox community, among them his uncle, the Chazan Ish Karelitz, and Rabbi Eliezer Shach who was also a leading Lithuanian rabbi in Israel. Knivsky had given his support to the rise of Rabbi Aaron Yehuda Lieb Steinman as the prominent figure in the Lithuanian community, a choice largely based on a rabbi's following rather than any official declaration. Following Steinman's death in December of 2017, Knivsky was himself elevated to that position along with Panavis Yeshiva head Rabbi Gershon Edelstein. Knivsky was known for keeping to a strict and intense study schedule that would see him each year, among other things, study the entire Babylonian Talmud, a process that's more popularly completed over seven and a half years by learning one page a day. Unlike most prominent rabbis who regularly give public lectures, Konevsky would only give lessons or talks three times a year on the death dates of his father, his uncle, and Shrach, his former teacher. Thousands came to his modest Benai Brak home seeking rulings on religious law, advice, or simply a blessing. Those who arrived came from far and wide, including from abroad. More locally, Senior public figures, among them politicians, visited him for talks, in particular at times of major national events, 
such as elections or more recently the coronavirus outbreak. Konevsky, known for his brief responses, would famously deliver blessings as a two-syllable phrase, bu'a, the word formed from the initials of the Hebrew phrasing meaning blessings and success. He aligned with the Degel Hatora ultra-Orthodox political party, part of United Torah Judaism, although he refused to become a member of its guiding spiritual council. Konevsky published over a dozen books on traditional Jewish law, known as Halakha and prayer. Among his most prominent works is Derek Ha Emuna, Way of the Faith, which deals with religious commandments specifically related to living in the land of Israel. Some of his rulings made headlines when they touched on topics relevant to ultra-Orthodox life in modern Israeli society. Without specific permission from a rabbinic authority and that those who already had them could not sell them but must destroy them instead. In a responsum to a reader published in the ultra-Orthodox daily newspaper, Yated Neiman, he wrote that it is forbidden to be in possession of an iPhone and one must burn it, despite the fact that the question came from a business owner who said it was crucial for his dealings. A controversial ruling in 2015 reportedly instructed paramedics of ultra-Orthodox United Hatsala organization that at the scene of a terrorist attack, they should treat injured victims before treating terrorists who carried out the assault, even if it meant leaving them to die. The ruling came at a time when the Israeli Medical Association was grappling with the issue based on the principle of charity begins at home to justify medical professionals treating victims first. In 2016, Konevsky ruled that medical cannabis is kosher for use on Passover, as long as it does not violate the law of the land. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Konevsky faced intense criticism for his handling of the crisis. He made headlines on March 12th of 2020 when despite appeals from the Prime Minister's office and the Israel police, he insisted that yeshivas and schools remain open in defiance of government calls to close them, handing down a religious ruling stating that canceling Torah study is more dangerous than the coronavirus. At the time, there were 200 active corona cases in the country and no deaths. He changed course two weeks later as the infections climbed to hundreds daily and his hometown of B'nai Brick saw widespread infection, ordering followers to pray individually and keep to health rules. He also ruled that people may transgress Shabbat by answering their phones, an action only allowed for life-saving circumstances in order to get virus test results. He came under criticism again later in the pandemic after advising yeshiva students against getting follow-up tests for the C-19 after contact with a known V carrier saying it would take them away from their studies. But Konevsky was also a strong proponent of the V and he and his family even received threats from anti-Vs after he came out in support of doing the V on children age 5 through 11 to protect against the disease. Now you're familiar with the scripture Psalm 90:10 that everybody talks about that the days of our lives are 70 years and if by reason of strength they are 80 years yet their boast is only labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So this is one of the most prominent rabbis in Israel and perhaps a million people will be at this funeral in Israel. And he was 94 years old. I mean, Jesus is going to reveal himself to them at some point. And this is part of the prophecy that's yet to be fulfilled. However, this is the rabbi that was saying he was in meetings behind the scenes with the Messiah. We know that Rabbi Kaduri wrote the name Yeshua as the Messiah and didn't want the name to be revealed until a year after he had passed away. And then there was a lot of hush-hush about the name Yeshua. Oh, we can't have that, you know. So, is it interesting that this prominent rabbi has passed away and 
he basically outlived the 70 and 80 years for this generation. And all of that generation is not going to pass away before the Messiah comes. So I think it's very interesting that he was very prominent in a lot of the articles that I read in the past where he would say that the Messiah was imminent and that he was going to soon be revealed. Remember, we heard that, and that was around one of the times of Passover. And now I guess he knows the truth of who the Messiah is because he's passed away. And it makes me wonder how soon to the Lord rapturing the believers is to us now. So this even further makes me wonder if this passing of this rabbi is one more inkling that we are very close to the soon revealing of our beloved Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth. And I hope you'll give your heart and your life to him because he's the Savior of the world. And there is no other Messiah. There is no one who can do what he did and redeem us back to the garden of God. So I just wanted to share this news that's breaking news that Rabbi Konevsky has passed away at age 94. And, you know, it's very interesting. And I wish that we knew more about what he was really saying when he said that he had been having meetings with the Messiah. So now that's the end of his life, and we're still watching and waiting for the imminent return of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. So this is just an update about what's going on over in Israel, and I like to kind of keep you informed about what's going on there, and hopefully... Um, just keep track of things as they're going because we know that watching Israel is, you know, the big part of prophecy and what's going to happen with the Messiah's return. So that's all I wanted to talk about tonight. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for um, people that sent me cards in the past, um, people that donated something that really helped and Thank you for the blessings. I need it, and I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. And um, let's just pray that God gives me a place to live so that I can get out of here and get on with my life in this testimony. God bless you, and I'll talk to you later. And I just want to share this beautiful necklace that my sister gave me, and it's a little bunny looking up. And she said it was Bunnykin looking up at me. <laughs> That's really sweet. All right, well, good night. And happy St. Patrick's Day and happy birthday to me. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later.